coming to the indications of THR, either advanced collapse and degenerative changes uh, following avascular necrosis of the hip, like we mentioned, the inflammatory arthritis, post traumatic, you could get uh, uh, acetabular fractures uh, or fracture dislocations, or even uh, fracture neck femur that goes into avian that can cause degenerative arthritis. Sequelae of septic arthritis from childhood, pediatric conditions like old perthes, SCFE, dysplasias, all these things could be one of the uh, indications for a total hip replacement. Now, following on, what are the different types of THR? All, you, all of you know that when it started, when uh, Sir John Charlie started with total hip replacement, it was almost always cemented total hip arthroplasty. In the early 60s, 70s and probably up to the mid 80s, it was all the era of cemented total hip arthroplasty. Subsequently, because of certain issues that we might discuss later on, uncemented designs came into the market and at the moment, the preferred arthroplasty option, total hip option is uh, uncemented total hip arthroplasty. There is another uh, entity called the hybrid total hip arthroplasty. Hybrid in the sense, on one side you do uh, one type of uh, arthroplasty, on the other, the other one. In the sense, on the acetabular side you do an uncemented top and on the femoral side you do a cemented one. Why so? Because it has been found that in the long term, the cemented cups loosen out much earlier than uncemented cups. The reason we might talk about it a little later, but the well done cemented stems last as long or even longer than an uncemented uh, stem. So this is the reason in uh, some people pre prefer to do a uh, hybrid total hip replacement. And also compared to an uncemented THR, it may be a little cheaper, more economical to the patient. But the scientific reason is, uh, the acetabular cups, cemented cups, loosen out faster than an uncemented cup. So that is the reason why some people prefer to do a hybrid THR. Following on, the next point that we discuss, how do you, what are the factors that influence selection of a particular type of total hip arthroplasty? One is the age. Most often, total hip arthroplasty is meant for people beyond say 60 65 years of age the reason being you do this once it should last a lifetime by and large the modern arthroplasty hip arthroplasty in particular lasts about 15 to 20 years in well done uh, situations so if you do it around around the age of 60 it, it will last one uh, individual's lifetime uh, but there are situations like an inflammatory arthritis or avascular necrosis where the activity levels are so disabling and the pain is so severe that you need to intervene early and some of these patients undergo even at the age of 20, 25 years uh, hip replacements and the modern designs can last even longer. So the factors that determine or the selection of a, a patient for total hip arthroplasty are one is the age, second is the activity level. You are not treating an x-ray, you are treating the patients. So it is important that you get a proper detailed history as to what he can do, what he cannot do, how much is the pain, how many tablets he takes, how bad is the sleep disturbed. These are all things that you need to note in the history before you embark on uh, doing a total arthroplasty for that particular patient. And then comes the quality of bone. So depending on the uh, quality of bone, you do a uh, a certain type of arthroplasty. We will explain to you in the probably in the next question, in the next module, but the quality of the bone also determines the type of implant that you would choose for a particular patient. Okay, I think if, with these, these points, uh, you could be very clear in your mind as to the uh, selection of patient and implant for your arthroplasty. So, we'll move on to the next station. Here, uh uh, I like uh, Dr. Ashish sir to kindly comment on the x-ray which has been put. So thanks Vishal. 
Uh, so this X-ray is a AP of the hip, right hip, and it shows uh, arthrit arthritis of the right hip. What we need to mention here is the bone quality, because that would determine our plan. If the patient satisfies all the criteria that we discussed earlier, if the patient is symptomatic enough that his or her activities are restricted, and is has uh, tried and failed all the conservative methods of treatment, then he or she may be a candidate for a uh, hip arthroplasty in this scenario. So in this case, with the arthritic hip and an osteoporotic stem, we'll have to go for a total hip uh, arthroplasty. So depending on the quality of the femoral stem, we'll decide on what type of uh, femoral component and fixation we'll choose. Uh, we'll elaborate it in the further questions. So, how do you classify these types of uh, 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 femur based based on what criteria do you like to classify? These are the questions which have been put forward. That is, what are the types of types of canal classification system and type of fixation? So, I'd right. like to take the first question, sir. So, these uh, femoral stems are classified by something called as door classification. So DOR classifies the femoral steps into three types, A, B, and C. So it all uh, is based on the geometry of the proximal femur and the osteoporosis of the proximal femur. So here, the differentiation is the thickness of the cortices here. So DOR A, DOR B, and DOR C. To classify it further, uh, we use a ratio called Calcar canal ratio. So, calcar canal ratio is the ratio between A, which is the diameter of the femoral canal at a point 10 centimeters from the lesser trochanter, divided by B, which is the diameter of the femoral canal at the level of calcar. So, if this ratio is less than 0.5, which means a stem like A, stem like this, we call it a champagne time champagne type femoral stem and it is a stem suited for uncemented fixation because we can get a good purchase in the proximal femur type b in this case the ratio is between 0.5 to 0.75 there is thinning of posterior cortex especially on lateral view and the decision about femoral stem to be used cemented or uncemented will be made intra-op if you are able to get good purchase in a door type B canal, we can go for an uncemented type fixation as well. However, it is a good idea to keep a cemented stem as a backup in such cases. Uh, going forward, door C, in this case, the ratio that is uh, door's ratio or uh, calcar to canal ratio A by B is more than 0.75 because of thinning of cortices at this point. So because of such osteoporosis and thinning of cortices, we cannot uh, expect a good proximal fixation in this type of femoral stem. These stems are also called stove pipe femur. These stems are suited for cemented uh, fixation. So if you get a door C femur, it will not be a good idea to even think about a cementless stem in this scenario. Mostly you see such uh, door C type femurs in a fractured neck of femur patient who would be a good candidate for a cemented hemiarthroplasty. Uh, 